In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at a very, very active tropics, both in the Eastern Pacific, especially the Eastern Pacific, but also some opportunities in the Atlantic. We talked about this yesterday quite a bit, but we are entering into the beginning portion of the very active uh, time of year of tropical activity in the Atlantic, which is August, September into a little bit of October. Typically, the first half of August isn't quite as active as late August and early September, but it does usually present opportunities for tropical activity. And we are going to see a few of those on the model runs today. So we're going to be taking a look at that. The cooler air is knocking on the door it's about to move into the central and eastern states we're going to discuss that there is even some model guidance suggesting that that could last at least towards the midway point of august which would be really really crazy models are at least in agreement that we will see about five to seven days of pretty well below normal temperatures but some suggesting even longer outside of that we'll just go over the entire pattern for the lower 48 of the united states so let's go ahead and dive into things and first things first we're going to take a look at the eastern pacific actually and we can see the model runs playing out uh, we talked about this red area here how there's actually multiple threats that move through there we just saw one two and then three maybe four here on this gfs model run and then a fifth there at the end so crazy amounts of activity kind of just surging out of this area the first of which is an 80% chance of development over the next two days and then 90% chance over the next seven days. So a very, very high likelihood that we see a storm form in this area. We do see this yellow chance that's almost just sitting right over top of it. This one's a little bit of a longer range chance, so probably for the second potential storm. This has a 0% chance over the next two days, but a 30% chance over the next seven with plenty of time for this to increase in probability. So we'll be watching this one. And then we can see off a little bit to the west. This one is now a code red as well, with a 70% chance of development across the board over the next two days and seven days. Let's go ahead and dive into the Atlantic, though. And we're going to watch this model run play out. And, and really, I'm actually going to back it up here so we can watch the whole thing together. Uh, but the first thing that's very, very interesting is this area right here in our MDR there off of Africa. It's the area between the Caribbean and Africa. It stands for Main Development Region. And we see a lot of activity kind of just sitting in the southern area of that MDR. And models have been pretty consistent with a tropical wave kind of making its way out of here and heading towards the Caribbean slowly but surely. It's important to note that this is very, very far away. So... It's going to take some time to get over here. Let's take a look at what happens, though, as we just kind of play out the model run. It does start to get some swirl to it by the time we're looking at the 31st, which I think will be Thursday. It doesn't really take off. Uh, we do see it move into that Eastern Caribbean area, and then it moves right over Puerto Rico, right over Dominican Republic, right over Haiti, and right over Cuba. Kind of a hurricane killer, if you will, because those mountains, especially in Dominican Republic and Haiti... Uh, just tend to break up these storms. Flatland can break up storms, but you can imagine mountains are much more dramatic in that effect. By the time we're reaching about August 11th is by the time it'd be entering into the Gulf. And really by that point, uh, it doesn't really take off. Yesterday's model runs, it did show it kind of picking up steam once it makes its way into the Gulf. But this time around on today's model run, we're not really seeing it. It's important to note that this is one model, the GFS model, and the European model, which we're about to move over to, actually shows a lot more tropical activity which is weird because usually the gfs model is the more aggressive of the two but today the european one uh takes the crown on that so we're going to move over and take a look at that european model so here we are taking a look at the european model and i want to just move us forward towards tomorrow on wednesday the 30th we will have plenty of storms around for the southeast here also parts of the plains and midwest dealing with some thunderstorms for the day tomorrow on wednesday the 30th i can't believe we're almost all the way done with july already by the time we're looking at the 31st the final day of july we do see the four quarter states getting some activity some of the plains the deeper south and lower midwest ohio valley southeast mid-atlantic even southern new england they're dealing with thunderstorms and showers, so a little bit stormier for Thursday, a little bit more widespread with it. 
Friday on the 1st of August, we see mainly the southeast corridor seeing this activity. It's important to note that our ridge is now in full swing effect out west, and our trough in the east is in full swing effect. And we've talked about this so much that I'm almost certain that 90% of you have already heard me say this, but we have a strong, humid, warm push from the south, which there always is going to be this time of year in the summer, because that's the kind of default air mass. And it's being forced out by a very strong Arctic air mass for this time of year. And that creates a very, very strong conflict of these two air masses. And as they kind of meet head to head, that forces the air upward when it's a similar or equal uh, strength pushing south and northward from each individual air mass. It forces it upward, which creates lift, which really causes this, this lifting uh, rising motion and that's how clouds and thunderstorms form so we do expect to see a lot of storminess along this boundary we do see it here for friday on the first of august as you can see and even as we head a little further saturday on the second we see a lot of it's offshore and this is going to be concerning a little bit because when we, you get these storm systems pushing offshore especially strong ones and they sit around over those stagnant warm waters these can spin up into tropical systems, and we've seen it happen so many times, especially early season. I feel like this is how a lot of our systems form. So we're going to be watching very closely for that first week of August in this area. Sunday on the 3rd, we get a similar kind of uh, movement as to what we saw in earlier on in July, where we were getting a lot of systems moving downward off the southeast into the Gulf. This one kind of moves back in and maybe going to have some chance for development, whether that's a 1% or 90% time will tell, but a chance nevertheless. As we move towards Thursday, it's important to note that we kind of get this system by the 5th here a couple days earlier, moving very slowly towards the southeast on this European model. We watch it just kind of meander its way in past the Bahamas, and there's just a lot of activity all around. I mean... Try to find all the areas uh, that are just kind of blobs of storms. I mean, any of these can really, really take off here. Um, and then we get this one moving over Haiti and Dominican Republic, which I'm almost certain is that one that we've been watching on the GFS model, moving all the way through the MDR into the Caribbean and eventually into the Gulf on the GFS model. This one uh, wants to take it a little north of there. It still gets a lot of land interaction with Haiti. Dominican Republic is a weaker system. Uh, this is towards the very end of the model run, keep in mind, to so take it with a grain of salt. But we do see this one kind of swing into the Bahamas here by the 13th, and it's just sitting between Florida and the Bahamas, and it's actually intensifying pretty quickly once it reaches this area. It's the very end of the model run, like I said, but the system isn't really just forming out of nowhere at the end of the model run. It's actually a pocket of storms that we looked at towards the beginning of the video, and at the end of the day... That's going to give us a lot more confidence that there could be something moving into, let's say, the Southern Caribbean, the Gulf, the Bahamas, or even off the East Coast or out to sea. It's really up in the air, no pun intended, where this one could move to. Uh, but we're going to be watching it closely. This is going to be one of our more legitimate tropical waves, I think, of the hurricane season so far. The very, very young hurricane season, I should add. But uh, nevertheless... This will be our most legitimate shot at uh, tropical activity, at least like a more traditional, again, starting off of a wave of Africa, moving all the way across the Atlantic into the Caribbean, and then somewhere from there. We're going to be tracking this one for a long time, guys. I'm just going to let you know now. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the total precipitation. And as you can see, looking at this, we do see pretty large amounts across the southeast Obviously, our tropical system doesn't even make it on shore to anywhere in the United States. So this is not any tropical activity. This is actually just uh, your typical uh, just thunderstorm showers that we're expecting in the upcoming pattern. So considering that, this is pretty impressive amounts across the southeast, especially like the Carolinas into a little bit of Virginia, like my neck of the woods. We do still see rather large amounts for the nor northern plains, Midwest, and even into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. So looking at the anomalies, again, above average across much of those areas that I was just mentioning, a little bit below average for the south central states, and also for some of the areas closer to that Canadian border, like the Great Lakes in the northeast. But uh, overall, nobody's too substantially below average here. Uh, and 
I would say this is mostly above average, actually, for the entire nation. Let's take a look at the last three days of temperatures. And you can see we've still been in this very, very hot pattern. And that is expected to continue for a couple more days for the central and eastern states. As that cooler air finally moves in, uh, it's important to note that this cooler air in the west has really forced this warmth into the east. We call this a negative PNA effect. And what we're going to see in the upcoming temperatures, as we're looking at now, actually, I want to move us forward towards, let's do, this is a good example. So we see here by the 5th, we get this warm blob. This isn't a traditional positive PNA. This is a much more south-based one uh, because we still have cooler temperatures here over the northwest. But it's enough uh, to force a lot of this cooler air to spill into the central states and even a little bit beyond into the eastern states here. And that's really where our cooldown is originating from. So very, very fascinating. Again, fairly rare for this time of year. And that's by the 5th. Again, we expect it as soon as the 1st and 2nd here. Here's the 1st. Then here's the 2nd. You can see it really takes over. And that lasts at least till the 5th, 6th, 7th. The east coast is really holding on to that cooler air until we get later on this ensemble model, which is many, many models put together and taking the mean average. It really starts to get blended up and just kind of messy here towards the end. But I did want to show you guys the GFS ensemble model, which wants to hold on to that cold a little bit longer. So we get the cooler air moving in, and it's worth noting that it's actually more intense on this GFS model compared to the European model. We keep going, and this is already by the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and then... Uh, yeah, still some signs of cooler air. Again, it's an ensemble model, so the further out you go, the less intense the signals look. But we have really strong signals still at the very end of the model run for warmer air out west. And you can tell there's some blue areas, some cooler anomalies happening here in the east. It looks neutral, but with this warm blob out west, you'd have to imagine that it would be much cooler in the east than this model is showing here. Um, and... This would be a little bit more suggestive that we're going to be seeing potentially this cooler air or maybe let's say the first cooldown, a little bit of a warm up and then another cooldown. It could happen that way as well. But this is a signal that we could have predominantly cooler air for this time of year through the midway point of the month, which is extremely rare to have that long of a cooldown this time of year. We'll watch it very closely, uh, but definitely interesting and definitely something we're going to keep track of. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.